To write some larger examples, I'm going to start putting them in the top area instead of the bottom area. When we have an expression like 1 plus 2 in this top area and we click Run, uh, then its value gets printed out uh, down below. Not with its type, so that's the one difference, but we can see the results down there. The reason I want to move up here is I want to start writing expressions like if, suppose I want to do something depending on whether apple is equal to banana. Of course it isn't, but I say if and then an expression like apple equal banana, and then for the then part I start it with a vertical bar. So I'm going to return the symbol yes if apple is banana, and then for the else part we start another vertical bar, uh, no if apple is not equal to banana. So when we run this we should see the symbol now. So this vertical bar for if is probably the, uh, the first thing that looks different to you than other languages. The reason we use vertical bar makes more sense if we start on a new line. So as a general rule, when you have a vertical bar in syntax, uh, you can start it on a new line. And the rule is that the vertical bar needs to line up with the form that it's a part of. So under the if in this case. So if I run this one, it'll be the same as before. You could even put them half on one line and half not, but we don't generally do that. Suppose I want to check several things, whether 2 is less than 1, or 2 is greater than 1, or 2 is exactly equal to 1. I could do uh, these three different cases by using nested ifs, but what we usually do in Splate instead is use the cond form for conditional. So in cond form, I get to write three different tests, each starting with the vertical bar before it, and then after the vertical bar, I put a colon and the answer in that case. So if 2 is less than 1, I'll say less. If it's more than 1, I'll say more. Otherwise, I'll say same. So when I run this example, we should see more, of course. Um, because I have coverage turned on, we also see that 2 double equal 1 is uh, highlighted in black. That means that it wasn't even tried. That expression was never evaluated. That's because as soon as con finds an answer that's true, uh, then it, it takes that case there. Now, as a general rule, when you have a syntax with colon in it, you can put the part after colon on a new line, and then it should be more indented than the part before the colon. So a more typical way of writing this conditional is uh, with new lines after each colon, just like this. But again, it's optional, and you can write it either way. Another thing you can do with con is use else with a tilde mark in front of it. Right? A tilde means a keyword, um, and a con recognizes the else keyword as a possibility for the last case. So we would only get there if like, we were trying uh, two cases that are not true, then we hit the else case and return the same. In addition to if and kind, we also have a kind of conditional with the and operator and the or operator, written with two ampersands or two, um, two vertical bars. So if I want to check whether one is equal to one and two is equal to two, and we'll do that, and it will return true in that case. Um, if I want to say is 1 equal to 2 or 3 equal to 4, um, or tries both of those things. But let's suppose I say if 1 is equal to 1 or 3 is equal to 4, um, then we see that the 3 equals 4 is not tried at all. That's because and stops, uh, or stops, as soon as it gets a true value, and and will stop as soon as it gets a false value. So here, uh, the second part. In other words, these AND and ORs are short-circuiting. So in some cases, they can make a good alternative to using a COND or an IF.